In this section we're going to focus on triggers, creating triggers, defining triggers, and seeing how they're useful within a MySQL DBMS environment. Triggers are associated with tables, that's first and foremost. Let's open our gedit window to take notes regarding the rules and regulations behind using triggers within a MySQL environment. We'll navigate towards the bottom and label this section as triggers. As mentioned, triggers are tied or attached to tables. So they're stored within the DBMS's namespace and as a result require unique names and they are attached to tables. Triggers act upon certain events that occur upon a given table and those events will define momentarily but generally speaking if you want something to occur after or before an insert update or delete action has occurred or is going to occur on a table you'll want to use a trigger to effect those changes and there are all sorts of things you can do with triggers including updating other tables which we'll show you how to do causing other functions to run and so forth as a result of data being inserted updated or deleted from a given table of interest. Now you may tie multiple triggers to the same table providing that the events and times do not clash. Now let's show you what the syntax resembles when defining trigger triggers. You use a create statement so it's a DDL statement or data definition language statement followed by the keyword trigger followed by the remainder of the syntax which begins with the trigger name no differently than create table create database and so many other DDL statements that you're accustomed to using so we'll specify trigger name as simply trigger underscore name followed by what is known as the trigger time which we'll define momentarily followed by the trigger event followed by the keyword on which is immediately followed by the table name that the particular trigger should be bound to followed by, and this is a continuation which we can indicate with a backslash or simply a new line, for each, and these are keywords, row, followed by trigger underscore statement. This may look a bit lengthy, but it is very easy to comprehend and is not complicated by any means. So let's explain what's happening here. We'll tie a trigger with a certain name to a certain table but the create trigger statement or DDL statement accepts three primary arguments with the exception of the name so the three primary arguments include name the time and the event but the two important ones besides the name which is obvious includes the time and the event let's define the time trigger underscore time essentially means when should the trigger attempt to activate based on two possible values before or after a given statement so let's say for example we want this a trigger that we define to occur after an event has occurred that means after the interesting event and the interesting event is defined as the trigger event which is the next argument which is generally an insert update or delete type event has occurred so trigger time can be after or before so it's before or after. These are the two keywords that can be used as a trigger time argument. Again, let's say for example an update is about to occur on a table which means a given role already exists within your table. For us it would be perhaps the employees table. Let's say an update was occurring to a given row if we define a trigger which says before the update occurs execute this means that indeed before the update to the row is permitted the trigger will be executed and then the remainder of the update will be carried out unless the trigger prevents the update from being carried out and ditto for after after simply means the update has been carried out and we want to effect some sort of event after the fact so the trigger time is the next argument after the name and it's very important. The two possible values include before or after. Let's move on and discuss trigger event. Trigger underscore event accepts three possible 
types of answers or values, including insert, update, or delete. These are the three possible values that may be stored here. And let's explain what this all means. After you've defined when the trigger should occur, whether it's before an insert, update, or delete, or after an insert, update, or delete, the very next argument is the trigger event. The trigger event is essentially what the DBMS looks out for, the, which is the type of event that is enabled or is occurring on the row at the particular time. So at any point in time, if an insert, update, or delete is taking place, and a trigger or triggers that you have defined reflect insert, update, or delete, then in all likelihood your trigger will trigger and cause whatever statement you've defined, which is the next argument, to take effect. So let's recap. We create a trigger with a name, but we need to specify whether or not the trigger executes or triggers before or after an insert, update, or delete statement. Insert, update, or deletes are considered to be trigger events. These are the possible types of events, and in some cases they're literally transposed, in others they're not. Inserts can also mean insert statements or anything that would insert data into a table such as a load data or using MySQL import as we've done so many times. Update could be an update statement and delete could be literally a delete statement being executed against a given row such as using a delete from table name star or where a criteria matches. So the third important argument besides trigger name, which is the first important argument, but it's a given, is the following. Maybe we should just renumber these so that we list them as they really are represented. Trigger name is first, but this is self-explanatory. Name of trigger, which needs to be unique. Trigger time is the second argument. Trigger event is the third. And the fourth argument, after we've specified the table that the trigger is to be bound to, is the trigger statement. So trigger statement's very important. So let's copy trigger statement from this section here and paste it into section number four. Now a trigger statement generally is a single statement but can be multiple statements which simply means that when a trigger does trigger or executes or fires or whatever term you want to describe the trigger actually executing, a statement will be executed. Generally, that statement is a single statement, which means that you can specify it no differently than you do a single statement within the MySQL terminal monitor. But there is an exception which allows you to use stored procedure type syntax to enable multiple statements by using beginning and ending clauses. We'll show you that in the next section, but for now we'll just stick to a single statement, such as update a given column in a given table whenever a certain event has occurred based on a trigger time before or after. We'll probably go with after. So the trigger statement is simply a standard SQL statement or we should probably say MySQL statement since MySQL slightly bends the SQL standard rules like do most if not all DBMS's on the market. So a trigger statement is a standard MySQL statement. So let's recap what the syntax is like. We will create a trigger with a name based on a certain time. This is before or after the very next argument, which is the event. And insert, update, or delete, which are the three common types of actions that will occur on a table. Triggers are tied to tables. So we bind them to a table using the on keyword followed by the table name and then the trigger occurs for each row since each row is independent and as a result will cause the trigger to fire. So you want to tie triggers to tables where the changing of rows becomes a very important event causing the trigger to execute. And then we follow that up with the trigger statement which is a standard SQL statement or could be multiple statements which we look at in the subsequent section. So to put this all into context how could we go about executing a trigger within our environment. Let's take a look by connecting to the MySQL DBMS. We'll just stretch this window out a bit and execute MySQL user root followed by password and once in we'll show databases. The same databases exist so we'll use HR followed by a show tables. 
So here we have a base table of employees, which is always our concern. We've defined additional tables, but for now we're concerned with the employees table. So let's suppose we want to create a trigger which will update a yet to be defined table whenever the employees table, for example, is inserted. So whenever a new employee is added to the employees table, we want a separate table to be updated. As it stands, a select star from employees reveals nothing much. It contains one employee. But we want a separate table to be updated so that we can keep track of changes that are made whenever data is inserted into the employees base table. So task define trigger to update a separate table whenever employees table has been inserted which is the event and we'll put it in between single quotes inserted so whenever an insert occurs or an insert type statement which could be from a literal insert or from a load data or MySQL import occurs we want a trigger to fire to update a column in a yet to be defined table let's create a table to house those updates now this is just perhaps management being anal and wanting to know whenever changes have been made to a given table, but if it's an important table, if it's a table which contains important data, you may want to update it, not just with simple information such as a timestamp, but we'll begin with a timestamp and you can extend that model to also include usernames and additional useful information. So we'll go ahead and we'll create a table. We'll call this particular table employees inserted and this can always be renamed, but this is just in the case to us that we're basing it on the insert event. So employees inserted, and it will contain one column, and it will be a timestamp column because whenever the default value is sent to the timestamp column, the DBMS will simply insert the current timestamp. So let's create this particular table, and we want to give it a name, so we'll just give it something such as last or call the column last inserted for example followed by timestamp as the type of field and that should create the table for us so let's go to the shell and create this new table and then re-execute show tables and you'll see that we have this new table called employees inserted which currently has no data let's just confirm that by selecting star from employees underscore inserted and you'll see that there's no data so what we want to occur is as any user or application or subject inserts data into employees to just write the timestamp into the employees underscore inserted table which will tell us that the table has been changed n number of times so let's create that trigger we'll define the syntax inside of our gedit window and then copy it over it'll look like the following create trigger let's call it insert attempt because if it's transactional it could be rolled back so insert attempt after insert now notice the keywords after is the actual trigger time we want it to happen after the inserts occurred which indicates to us that the insert was successful so after an insert event let's continue on the name of the table, let's copy the table from the database, employees underscore inserted, that's the name of the table, or oh, in fact employees is the name of the table, so after an insert on employees for each row, and then we begin our SQL statement which says insert into employees underscore inserted values, and we'll just go with default which will put the timestamp, or we could have submitted null. So let's recap create trigger called insert attempt which can be renamed dropped or renamed later on after so this tells us that the operation was successful this will occur only after the data has been inserted into the employees table and after the event type of insert we could have done this for update as well on the table employees so the trigger tells the DBMS to monitor all insert operations on the employees table and for each row, which means for each new row, when you insert data, you create a new row. Insert into employees underscore inserted the default value, which will simply 
indicate a timestamp. If it looks confusing, you'll see the results momentarily. Let's go ahead, and by the way, if you want to see the triggers that are defined within the database, simply execute a show triggers. This shows you any currently defined triggers. Now we've created the new trigger, albeit pasted on separate lines. And now let's re-execute the show triggers, and you'll see that one new trigger has been defined with many columns describing how the trigger operates, including the event, the event that is to occur as an insert, the timing, the timing in our case is after, and so forth. Here's the statement that will run in the event that an insert takes place on the employees table. So now let's describe employees to see which columns are required, and then go ahead and insert data into it. ID is automatic, first name will not accept nulls, neither will last name, middle name is optional, the others are required, and pay scale ID is required. So we need to insert at least those values. So let's go ahead and execute an insert into employees. And by the way, before we do this, let's just select star from employees underscore inserted, just to be sure that nothing's there, and then we'll execute an insert into employees and we'll set the columns that we're interested in working with which includes F name equivalent to let's say Dean followed by L name which is next and is required equal to Davis followed by DOB which is required so let's specify DOB equivalent to 2000 or that is 1975 mm -hmm. And we can specify any stamp we want, so we'll just go at 820, followed by the next required field, which is the email field. So we'll set email equivalent to dean at linuxcbt.com, followed by start date. And it's also a date field, so we'll simply indicate it as 2003-03-01. Termination date is optional and pay scale ID is required so let's go ahead and specify pay underscore scale underscore ID equivalent to any value we'll just go at 20 and this should allow us to insert unless there's some sort of error notice we inserted without a problem let's go ahead and select star from employees you'll see that the new employee has been added Dean Davis so there are now two employees and then let's rerun that select star from employees underscore inserted and notice that a timestamp was inserted for two, representing 2006, 2, 17, 1810. If we were to select current, you'll see that it matches or is very close since time keeps running. Select current, or select now that is, returns a current stamp, which is very close, which means that our trigger functioned properly. Let's go ahead and insert a new value into the table structure to prove that the trigger is working. Let's add another employee and we'll specify last name. Let's go ahead and get that date of birth. And we'll specify the email address accordingly and same start date, pay scale same. New record has been inserted. We'll select star from employees. You'll see that there are now three employees. Now let's select star from employees underscore inserted and notice that there's a new timestamp. So the trigger for every single insert will trigger. Now there are many notes to be noted about triggers. We've defined a trigger. Let's show triggers that will trigger after and based on an insert type event. You can't define on any given table two triggers that will trigger using the same timing, in this case, after, as well as the same event. So you can't have two triggers that will trigger after an insert has occurred. But you can allow multiple statements to occur if you define multiple statements the way we'll show you next. So you want to define your triggers using independent events as well as independent timing values, before or after. We've mentioned that you can define triggers with single statements, which happens to be the default way of defining triggers. We now want to show you how to define triggers that can contain multiple statements, or in other words, execute multiple statements, of course in a sequential fashion. 
So let's label this section multiple trigger statements. Now the syntax is a little bit trickier for creating triggers with multiple statements. As you know, when you create a single statement trigger, it resembles the following. So a single, let's place this right above, normal triggers support one statement, one SQL statement. And they resemble the following, create trigger followed by the trigger name. followed by the trigger time or the timing so trigger timing which is usually before or after and once we've taken care of the timing we specify the event such as insert so let's specify trigger event and then we follow up with on followed by the table name and for each row we then perform SQL statement this is a standard single trigger or single statement trigger with a multi trigger statement however we simply or multiple statements in a, tr a single trigger we simply define the trigger as we have but then we include some new syntax. So let's copy the syntax and alter it to show you what the differences are when defining multiple statements in a single trigger. We still use the trigger name as well as the trigger timing and we should list just for your edification what these values mean. So trigger name is obviously obvious. Trigger name is name of the trigger. Trigger timing can be before or after and trigger event is usually based on an insert update or delete event in some cases the actual DML statements are literal in that they're actually inserts that take place or they could be load datas or MySQL imports and of course the trigger statement is what you want MySQL to execute so with multiple statements in a trigger the syntax is similar but after the for each row statement this clause here instead of specifying a SQL statement we specify a begin statement indicating that we want to define a compound statement. So we're going to use compound statement syntax to define a compound statement. The keyword instead of simply the SQL statement is begin and after begin we specify as many statements as we need to accomplish our task. Once we're finished with our statement so let's indicate statement 1 sentiment terminated that is by semicolon statement 2 and we'll just go up to statement n once completed let's indent this for clarity we'll then terminate the block or the compound statement using an end command followed by the actual delimiter which is semicolon the default delimiter but there is still some additional things that you need to know when defining a multiple statement trigger. It's not as simple as just laying out your multiple statements as you see here. So it's not as simple as just including n number of statements or two or more statements between begin and end blocks. Because each statement that's submitted to the MySQL DBMS engine requires a semicolon for termination, we need some way of instructing MySQL to use a different delimiter so that we're able to submit semicolons as part of the trigger. We want one when we submit the trigger that it's interpreted literally. And in order for this trigger, including the semicolons which terminate each statement to be interpreted limited, literally, that is, we need to tell MySQL to use a different delimiter for only defining this multiple statement trigger. So just for the time spent defining the multiple statement trigger, 
we're going to change the default delimiter that MySQL expects. The default delimiter is the semicolon. So let's just make a note of that. Default MySQL delimiter, we should say statement delimiter. And by statement, we mean SQL statement delimiter is semicolon, which is in between the single quotes here. And in order to define a multi-trigger statement, or multi-statement trigger, that is, so let's switch this around, multi, multiple statement trigger, we need to alter the delimiter that MySQL uses just for that particular statement that's defined. And in order to do so, before we create the trigger, we'll alter the delimiter. So before creating the trigger, alter the delimiter by using the delimiter keyword followed by a new delimiter such as pipe or double forward slashes or any consistent key or character that will be interpreted by MySQL. We'll go ahead and use pipe. That's the common example used throughout MySQL's documentation. And then at the end of the definition of the creation of the trigger, we'll need to reset the delimiter to semicolon so that when we type commands, the semicolon will be interpreted correctly. So at the end, we'll reset the limiter to simply semicolon. So really what we're defining when we're defining a multiple statement trigger is a block that resembles the following. It's indented like this. We start by defining just for the series of statements that are to follow a new delimiter and it's a temporary delimiter. In this case we're, we're going to use the pipe symbol followed by the create trigger statement with the name, the timing, the event on a given table since triggers are bounded to tables followed by the for each row clause but instead of specifying the single statement and then terminating with a semicolon as we do with a normal trigger because normally we specify for each row followed by a SQL statement then terminate with a semicolon we will then specify begin, which means to expect a compound SQL statement, which means the MySQL interpreter will expect a compound statement. This is considered a compound statement because it consists of two or more statements. Compound statements may also include only one statement, so that is perfectly fine as well. But ideally, if you only have one statement, you'll use the standard syntax and not go through the hassle of having to alter the delimiter two times, once going in and once going out to return it to its original state. So consider co compound statements within MySQL to be two or more statements. Now in our case, we're just going to update two separate tables in our compound block, but you could extend this model to mean anything within your DBMS environment, depending on the data requirements. Super. So let's write the syntax necessary for creating this compound statement. We could actually create a compound statement that inserts into the same table twice. That would certainly work. And then we'd create a new table and have it insert data into two separate tables. That will work also. So as it stands, if we execute a show triggers, you'll see that the existing triggers employees inserted is still defined. We're going to drop this particular trigger by executing a drop trigger employees underscore inserted and make way for a new trigger. The reason why we need to drop this trigger is because you can't have two triggers with the same timing and the same event. That's definitely not permitted. And actually the name here is incorrect. It's insert attempt we picked it from the wrong column. So that's drop trigger insert underscore attempt. And now that trigger is gone, a show triggers will reveal that nothing exists within the DBMS. So let's create our new trigger and we'll use the same name, but this time it will be a multi statement trigger. So we'll go with insert attempt and we just didn't want to conflict with the timing as well as the event. So the event being an insert, the timing being after. So let's go ahead and define the delimiter to be pipe followed by create trigger and its name which we have currently stored in memory and it's called insert attempt which will be bound to the employees table. We want to specify the timing to be after. The trigger event 
for this case, since we're labeling the name of the trigger, or labeling the trigger insert underscore attempt will be obviously insert. So we want the trigger to fire when an insert has occurred on the table. That's the event. On table name employees, so if a new employee is added, we'll complain or the trigger will do something. Followed by, for each row, begin. And after the begin, we specify multiple statements, including the fact that we want to insert into employees underscore update values default which will cause the default timestamp to be written to the column now we could end our compound statement here by simply specifying end followed by the semicolon indicating that we want to end the statement so each statement that's placed within a compound statement should be terminated with a semicolon. The begin doesn't need to be, but the end does need to be. Once complete, we'll reset the delimiter by executing delimiter semicolon. So let's go ahead and attempt to create this trigger one line at a time by first beginning with the delimiter, just to take it slowly. This sets the delimiter to pipe. So now any command that you execute on the MySQL server will expect a pipe as a delimiter. For example, let's show tables. If we execute a semicolon, notice it doesn't work. MySQL is waiting for the pipe to run the statement. So we could go ahead and do show tables, ending it with a pipe, and it executes nicely. We know that the delimiter has been set to pipe temporarily so that we can submit into the interpreter statements with a terminating semicolon so that the MySQL interpreter doesn't interpret it as meaning to end the statement and execute the statement at that particular point in time. So to cause the trigger to stick or to be submitted into the server we need to flip the delimiters. Now let's move forward with creating the trigger. Again we can define our trigger on multiple lines not until we submit the delimiter will anything be committed to the server. So it'll be after an insert on employees has taken place, for each row begin, let's take this particular line and we'll just go one line at a time, pressing enter each step of the way. And after the begin, we'll execute statement number one, which is an insert. Notice after we've pressed enter with the semicolon, the MySQL terminal monitor neglects to interpret the semicolon colon as meaning the end of a statement. So it ignores the semicolon and treats it literally rather than interpolating the semicolon to mean execute the statement that was previously typed, which is the default behavior for the terminal monitor environment. Let's go ahead and copy that end in, and the end with the semicolon will signal the end of the compound statement. So that's the end of the compound statement and when we're completed the submission of the trigger we will obviously need to specify a pipe to signal the end of the command this will end the trigger so we should have a pipe somewhere here it could be on a separate line or right after the end statement logically it should be after the end statement now the trigger has been submitted because my SQL currently expects pipe to terminate all statements or all commands that are to be executed. Let's go ahead and execute a show triggers. You'll see that the trigger is now defined, but we have the wrong delimiter. And because we have the wrong delimiter, MySQL prompts us with a new line expecting, or a new prompt expecting more. Let's go ahead and execute that again, a show triggers, followed by a pipe. And what we'll do now is, if you notice that the trigger is defined, it's called insert underscore attempt. It only has one command, however. What we'll do now is reset the delimiter to be semicolon, and we are returned to the original setup, which interprets properly. So this is considered a compound statement because it begins with a begin statement, the begin keyword, and ends with an end keyword. But this particular compound statement consists of only one statement. So in order to take full advantage of the fact that MySQL's triggers can execute multiple statements, we should use multiple statements. For example, we could insert into the same employee's update table twice. 
and that would prove the concept, albeit it wouldn't be useful and it would create redundancies, but it would prove the concept. So let's go ahead and drop trigger, insert underscore attempt, and now the triggers have been cleared, or the trigger is gone, and we will include another statement to insert into the same table. Just for the sake of proving the concept, we now have double statements, and in fact, if we want, we can run this four times, and you'll see four timestamps appended to the employees underscore update table. Let's go ahead and define this entire block. We'll just paste it in as is, and MySQL will in interpret it. Notice the entire block executed, and our delimiter has been returned to semicolon. So let's go ahead and execute a show triggers, which should be somewhere in our history. And there's the trigger with multiple statements, albeit it does the same thing four times, which isn't useful. But again, you should understand the concept and see how it's applicable in your environment. You may have multiple tables or columns that need to be updated where a multi-statement trigger could help. Now let's select star from employees underscore update to see what's currently there. And this says the table doesn't exist. Let's show tables. We may need to update our trigger. And it's employees underscore inserted, so we'll definitely need to update our trigger. Let's take this block, move it into a separate buffer, and just perform a quick replace. Replacing underscore update with underscore insert. And let's just confirm the name. It's actually inserted plural, or inserted ED that is, and let's replace it. And now we have a good block. But before we can use this block, we will need to drop the trigger. So we'll drop trigger. And that should be insert underscore attempt. And then we'll redefine the entire block. Now we have a new block. Super. So let's select star from employees underscore inserted. Notice it contains only two values. So if we perform an insert into the employees table, two should become six. Or if we execute a delete against this table, four new entries should be created. We could go ahead and do a delete from employees underscore inserted. And now a select star reveals that it's empty. Let's select star from employees. And you'll see that employees contains three users. Let's go ahead and insert a new user by executing. In fact, we can define it elsewhere, but since the column headers are in front of us, we'll just go ahead and do it here. Let's describe employees to see what's required. And then we'll perform an insert into employees and we have to insert the fields that are required so we'll go ahead and set f name l name as well as dob and we can specify this syntax in pretty much any way followed by email which is required start date is also required And the pay scale ID is also required. So let's go ahead and specify that as well. And we were able to insert that data successfully. So a select star from employees reveals a new employee. But similarly, a select star from inserted should reveal that four values have been inserted. Let's go ahead and select star from employees inserted. And notice that we now have four timestamps as a result of inserting a new employee into the employees table, proving the concept, which is that the compound statement 
in effect allows triggers to perform multiple statements, albeit sequentially, and in our case we are performing redundant entries into the same table, but we've proven the concept. Now this concept also extends to being able to call stored procedures from triggers which will allow a trigger to execute multiple statements which is another way of again executing multiple statements so if your interest is to use stored procedures within triggers know that you can within MySQL 5.x and as a result you can define your stored procedures and just simply call them from triggers which will in effect execute multiple statements if that's how of course your stored procedures are defined.